In the last lesson, we learned the words for it as a direct object pronoun. Let's learn the remaining direct object pronouns. First, let's review subject pronouns. We've learned these before already. The way to say I, you, he, and she, etc. I is ich, as a subject of a sentence. You, do, talking to a friend or family member or child, perhaps. He, er, she, z, it, s, although all three, er, z, and s, can mean it as a subject. We is wir. You, plural, informal, bunch of friends, bunch of family members, etc., is ihr. You, formal, whether singular or plural, is z, and they is z as well, but lowercase s. We've learned these before. Now the direct object pronouns. In English, we use them without thinking about it, but you would never accidentally say, he loves I. Of course, it's he loves me. Or you would never say, he loves she. It's obviously he loves her. So we have direct object pronouns in English. They occur, of course, in German as well. Repeat the German word for me, mich. Now, in English, the word you doesn't change as a direct object. But in German, it does. At least the word you, talking to one friend, family member, or child, the word du becomes, repeat, dich. Of course, he becomes him, repeat this word, in. She becomes her, repeat that word, z. And it, of course, is s, if it's something neuter. Although, as we've already learned in the last lesson, in, z, n, s, all three of these here can mean it, referring to something masculine, in, feminine, z, or s, neuter. Let's continue. The word for us in German, repeat, uns. The word for you, plural, informal, you, my friends, you, my family members, repeat this word, euch. Now, the U formal doesn't change. It's simply, repeat, Z. And the word them in English, that's a change. They to them in English. But in German, it still remains, repeat, Z. Interestingly enough, the word Z, which can mean she or it feminine, and could also mean U formal or they, that word does not change as a direct object pronoun. Now, let's learn a new verb, the verb kennen, which means to know somebody, to know a person, not to know a fact, but to know a person. Repeat the conjugation of this. Ich kenne, du kennst, er kennt, sie kennt, es kennt, wir kennen, ihr kennt, sie kennen. Good. Ich kenne John means I know John. How would I change that to I know him? Hopefully you said, ich kenne ihn. Du kennst Mary. How do you say you know her? Du kennst sie. Good. Er kennt John und Mary. He knows John and Mary. So you would say, of course, he knows them. How would you say it? Er kennt sie. Hopefully you got it. Wir kennen Tom. We know Tom. Change Tom to a direct object pronoun. What's your new sentence? Wir kennen ihn. Good. Sie kennt meinen Onkel. She knows my uncle. How would he change this sentence with a direct object pronoun? Hopefully you got it. Sie kennt ihn. She knows him. If she knows my uncle, she knows him. Ihr kennt meine Mutter. If you all know my mom, what does that mean? Get rid of the direct object. Change it to a pronoun. Hopefully you got it. Ihr kennt sie. Good. Sie kennen das Kind. That can mean they know the child or perhaps you formal know the child. What happens here? Hopefully you got it. It's sie kennen es. Now a child is obviously either a boy or a girl, but in the sentence sie kennen das Kind, well, das Kind is a neuter word. We, we're not specifying whether it's a male or female. So, sie kennen es is how to say they, or perhaps you formal, know him or her, this neuter thing called a child. Now, let's look at the verb to love. We came across this once before. Repeat all the forms. Ich liebe. Du liebst. Er liebt. Wir lieben. Ihr liebt. Sie lieben. Good. Repeat how to say, I love you. Ich liebe dich. Say, I love him. Ich liebe ihn. Say, I love her. Ich liebe sie. 
This last one could also mean, of course, I love them. That's possible, right? Say, I love you, plural. I love you, my children. I love you, my parents. Ich liebe euch. Good. Say, he loves us. Er liebt uns. And I'll say, he loves me. Er liebt mich. Good job.